What's going on everyone and welcome back to Power by Primus and in today's video we're going to be having a discussion. Now the one thing that I want to talk about before we really get into this is that if you do comment down below I want you guys to keep it a healthy conversation. Now I normally don't jump in on hype, I normally don't jump in on I would say dangerous conversations but this has super blown up and I got probably 45 messages this morning via Facebook and you know the channel and some other things about my opinions on this and how I truly feel about this so if you guys don't know it is about a new deck that did surface and it is an infinite combo deck now I'm gonna get into all that here in just a moment if you are confused about it um, so give me just a second here but what I want to start out with is talking about the health part of the game with a deck like this. Now, I guess there's a lot of issues that I have with it, but the first thing that I want to say is congratulations to the person that came up with it. I do think that it is really cool. I think that combo decks are very important in card games, right? I feel like it is a very strong archetype. And I feel like it's an archetype that a lot of people love. I'm one of those people. I love combo decks. But there are certain situations to win those combo decks now are no longer fun. It's no longer healthy for the game. It's not healthy for new players. And it really starts to hurt the game versus adding for it for help. So I'm going to get into all of my reasons. But like I said, for sure, I don't know who came up with it. Now, I know that it's been on a very small circuit of players who've been playtesting this for a while. I did hear about this deck a couple of weeks ago, but I wasn't really too sure on how consistent it was, how good it was. I've been super busy with trying to get the tournament up and going and all of that good jazz. So I haven't paid a whole lot of attention to it. And then today, I guess it got out and it has just been blowing up social media all over the place. So I wanted to clarify the deck to you guys. I wanted to clarify a few things about it. And just so everyone is aware and everyone is just, I guess, understanding of it. So I wanted to head off all of the issues, all of the conversations, and just do a video about it. So we're going to get into all of that stuff, but the one thing I want to ask you guys before we get into on a nice side of things before we go down this next road is that Wave 3 is coming out. The spoilers have begun, and it's really, really awesome. Now, with Wave 2, a lot of you guys didn't want to see Wave 2 stuff. A lot of you wanted to be left in the dark about it when it came to the spoilers. So, I wanted to ask you guys if you want me to start doing spoilers on Wave 3 stuff now that we have so many more subs, which is amazing. So, if you guys do want to see Wave 3 spoilers and breakdowns, I usually break down the car, talk about all the different decks, some really cool combos, some synergies. So, if you guys do want to see that, comment down below letting me know that you do want to see it. If I don't get a lot of those comments, talking about it I will not be doing them I want to make sure I'm doing the content that you guys like not just content just to give you guys content so let me know down below alrighty so now getting into this infinite deck now the one thing that I want to talk about is that it is what it says it is now I debated on showing you guys the deck list I honestly did and it was because I feel the more that you feed a fire the bigger the fire gets right so the more that people talk about it, the more that content creators like myself show you guys it, the more we talk about how powerful this deck is, more players are going to be playing it. More players are going to know how to play it. More players are going to want to play it. And then now you have more players who are hating going up against it and all that other stuff. It's kind of a chain effect. So I really debated on it, but I want to show it to you guys and give you guys my thoughts on it so you guys understand it and understand what it does to the game versus just going, cool, it's a combo deck, I'm going to go take this to my local tonight and play it and see how it goes. So, now, there are multiple issues I have with it. Now, again, I talked about it earlier, I love combos in a deck, in a game, right? I love it, love it, love it. The problem with this game is that you don't have a way to respond to it, okay? So the first thing that I want to talk about with a combo deck is that with this one specifically, I've heard it can go off as early as turn two, meaning that let's say you get to go first, you don't get to play any cards, you attack with a character, and then basically your opponent goes and they spend 30 turns killing you. You just kind of watch yourself lose. You don't get to respond. You just hope that they fizzle, which means that like they can't continue the combo, like they ended up, um, you know, missing a key piece or couldn't play it twice in the same turn, whatever the case is, 
they fizzle and then you get to go and then hope that you beat them that second turn or else they get to go again and then you lose. Um, so that is my first problem. Now when it comes to combos in most card games, you have four, five turns to kind of set up. You know your opponent has it. You have time to build up against it. You have time to disrupt it. You have time to race your opponent. If this thing does consistently go off, like people are saying, as early as turn two, turn three, and you're just dead, you don't have time to beat it, right? So that's my first issue, is that you either have to find yourself playing the same deck and then hoping that you get to go second, your opponent has to go first, and then winning via that way, or you have to hope that your opponent fizzles and then you win like you normally would, which I think is a big problem. Now, if combo deck was out there, and let's say it has a 50% win ratio, right? It's a scary number to look at, but it's manageable, right? You have the chance to beat it. That is okay with me. If I have the potential when I sit down at a table, I know my opponent has it, I can try to play around it, race them, disrupt them, I am all for combo decks being in the meta. So I want to say that right now. I am not against it. It is certain things that make it unfeasible in the meta, okay? So that's the first thing is that you can't beat it in time. The next thing is that this game, we don't have a way to respond on our opponent's turn. A lot of people are comparing this game to Magic, and I feel like it's a very bad thing to do. Yes, they're both created by Wizards of the Coast, but this game plays extremely different than Magic. And Magic combo decks have been a thing for a long time. There are some of the reasons why a lot of people quit the game is that, oh, turn two, your opponent gets to go off and you're just dead, right? But there's a lot of formats out there for Magic, so you can play many formats and all this other stuff. Well, right now, we don't have a lot of formats. We have one. That's all there is to it. So if this combo deck is as powerful as it says it is and just wins all the time, well, why are you, you going to want to play this game anymore? You want to play it to play with Ultra Magnus, which is coming, and play with some of these other characters and Optimus Prime and be able to do all these really cool things. And then you sit down to play, and your opponent's like, cool, go. And you're like, oh, all right, I attack. And then they're like, cool, I'm going to go infinite, this is how you're going to die, do you want to sit here for 30 minutes and watch me kill you, or do you just want to scoop and go to the next game? It's kind of boring, and it's not really that fun. It's one of the reasons why my, Volca my Volcanicus deck, um, I don't really play it that much, right? It's really fun to pull off in a game, but it takes a long time, and it's kind of boring for your opponent to sit there, almost get you dead, and then you're like, boom, I'm back to 65 health, and they're like, oh, that was useless, we just wasted 30 minutes and now I'm dead and we're going to go do it again? Like, I'm okay. It's really boring and it's not really fair for your opponent, right? I also think that it's very important for me personally, one thing that we really pride ourselves here on this channel, why we go to so many different local game stores, why we're having the tournament, why we're in the Facebook group trying to help people out, why we do some of our sessions where we you know, chat with people via emails or messaging to try to help them make their decks better, help them understand the meta better. It's one of the reasons why I'm doing the new episodes on how to get better in the Transformers TCG is that we really care about community. This game is so early on, I feel like community should be the focus. A lot of people want organized play, a lot of people want tournaments, a lot of people want a pro tour, and that's just not the way things are going to go for a while. We have to build up a community of people, and then at that point, what will happen is the community will separate. As much as people don't want it to happen, it always happens. You have your casual players who want to have a lot of fun, you have your competitive players who want to travel the world and make money. That's how it will usually go down. That's why there's a ranking system in most games, that's why there's a competitive team in most games, that's why there are content creators in most games is that you end up getting this diverse group of community people who love fun combo decks people who love casual decks people who love commander people who love singleton people who just love drafts there's a lot of people out there right so when it comes to this game we're so fresh we're so new we really need to be building the community getting more players into this game more players really enjoying this game in a combo deck like this especially this early on I feel like is really unhealthy for the community. You have a player who sits down, they just bought the starter set, they just bought a few packs, they got a deck from their friend, they've been kind of playing on their kitchen table for a while, they sit down to play this new fun game, and then they go, cool, this is my turn one, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for this, and then their opponent goes, infinite, you're dead. That new player is not going to want to play anymore. Either they're going to be so discouraged and be like, this was dumb, I just spent this money, I just came out here, I just got destroyed. 
and there was nothing I can do to it. Nothing. They go online, they find out that there's just not a whole lot that you can do to it, period, unless you run this one specific deck or you run just espionage, which we'll get into later on, to try to react to it and then hope that everything falls in place for yourself, that player's going to be discouraged. That player's not going to want to come out and play anymore. Or that player's going to go, well, if I want to play this game, I have to go get that deck. And then now you have two people playing that deck, and then they're going to do it to somebody else. And like I said earlier, it's just going to snowball and get out of control. And it just takes a lot of the fun out. Right now, we shouldn't be at that stage where we're trying to just demolish our opponent to where they want to go and sell their collection. We should be trying to encourage players. We should be, you know, hey, you have a couple extra cards, you have this new person come in, boom, man, here's some extra cool cards, let me show you some cool decks, here, go watch this deck tech video, they'll really help you out. It's, it's about building the community and having fun. This game brings so much of a nostalgia to a lot of players to where they get to play with the characters they want. The other thing about it is think about how many games that you've played that have gone to turn to game three. There's a lot of them. It's really, really fun game, and it comes down to a lot of just heart racing games where you're like, oh man, I just barely won that game, or you're like, oh, that one turn I flipped a blue and I really needed an orange out of one, and we went to game three and it was so much fun. That's what we want. That's what you should want. Even when you lose, you want, you'll know you'll have that feeling of being like, oh, that was so close, man. If I would have made this one tweak to this deck, man, it would have been a way different game. Or, oh, man, he got so lucky. That was so cool, so good of him. Oh, man, this really panned out. That's what we want. Not you sit down and you're like, okay, I'm ready to play. I just modded this deck. Let's go. And then you're dead. You didn't get to play. You didn't get to play any cards. You didn't get to do anything. And I feel like that's extremely unhealthy for the game. And again, like I said, we don't have counter magic in this game, which, by the way, I don't want it at all. Zero percent. Nothing. Don't want it. But that kind of thing allows you to stop a combo deck in those situations, and they're going to play that key piece, or they're about to win, there's nothing you can do, and you can be like, ha, no, we don't have that. You can't play anything on your opponent's turn, which I love. I love it, by the way. And they just, they beat you. That's it. One copy of one card or one combo or one character or whatever else shouldn't be able to change the game that much. The thing that a lot of people love about this game is the fact that my turn is my turn, your turn is your turn. I play the best of my abilities on my turn, you play the best of abilities on your turn, and we see who comes out on top at the end. And it usually when it comes down to you losing, it's because you made a misplay, you didn't have one card that you were really hoping that you would have, your opponent built a little better, your opponent played a little better. It, they're all things that you can work on. Playing against something like this, you can't really work on it. You're kind of stuck in that same situation. You're in that same scenario. So those are just my thoughts about a lot of the negative about the combo. Now I'm going to get into it here in just a second, showing you guys the deck, talking about how it works and stuff like that so you guys are aware of it. Um, and then we'll get into some things kind of way to counter it, I guess. But the last thing I want to talk about before we talking uh, before I start showing you guys the list and stuff is win rates. It's something that I'm going to go into in a future episode, which should be coming out probably on Wednesday, Thursday. But win rates make a huge difference, right? This combo deck is out there. You might see it. You might not see it. You might be playing it. You might not be playing it. Consistency is key. It's one thing that I talk a lot about in a lot of decks. And when I play test, I play test against a few specific decks that are very consistent because I know if I can beat that deck, that my deck is consistent. And even if your deck is fantastic, you can combo, infinite kill your opponent. If you play 10 games and you pull it off twice, I don't care about the deck. And it's not because of whatever else. I don't feel like it should be banned. I don't think it should be altered. It should be fine. But if this combo deck has an 80% win rate on turn two, something needs to change. People are going to play the decks that do really well. The people are going to play the decks that the content creators talk about. The people are going to play the decks that win. Why, why wouldn't you? You want to win. That's usually the point. You know what I mean? So I'm going to be testing up this deck. I am going to be sleeving it up. I'm going to be showing you guys it on the channel as well. I'm going to try to build against it, and I'm going to try to play it. I think it's the best way to really handle the situation is to just play the deck. 
I'm super excited to play against it. I'm super excited to play it. I really, truly, truly am. Because I want to see how it interacts. I want to see how consistent it is. I want to see if there's any holes in it. I want to see how you can play against it. Because until Wizards of the Coast addresses it, which they may not, there is no rule breaking within the deck. There's none. The deck is 100% legitimate. The way the cards are played are legitimate. It is just a really, really gnarly, but really, really cool combo that lets your opponent take infinite turns over and over and over. And I'll tell you guys, the trick is Plasma Burst. They uh, play one card, and that's Plasma Burst, and just hit you for two. Take another turn. Hit you for two. Take another turn. Hit you for two. So I hope you guys see where I'm going with it, is it takes a long time to be able to get rid of an opponent, especially if you got two or three big health dudes. I mean, you're talking two damage to turn on someone like Optimus Prime or Nemesis Prime where they have 16. That's eight turns that your opponent has to spend KO in one guy. And then if you have another guy that takes seven turns, okay, well, that's 15 turns that your opponent is sitting there spending their dealing two damage to you while you're just watching it. So, anyway, I hope that does sum up for you guys my opinions on the deck. Like I said, um, not a fan of, com of combo decks in this meta, in this game, at this point. I am completely and 100% open to combo decks, though. I really, really, really am. I think they're a lot of fun. I just think that there is a time and a place for them, and right now is not that time. The last thing that I wanted to talk about about this deck is a lot of people have been asking me, and I want to say begging me, <laughs> lots of people, about if this deck is going to be playable at our Heroes Rise tournament. So I don't know if any of you guys out there as our subs are going to be making it out to the event or not, but if you are, this deck is banned. Now, I know, like I said before, the deck doesn't break any rules. It doesn't whatsoever. It follows every game rule. It is just a super cheesy deck. It really, really is. And the reason why I'm saying no to it is for all the reasons I previously talked about, is that I just don't know where it sits yet. A lot of the players don't want it, and obviously I'm going to follow where the players are. So if I have, let's say, 30 players showing up, I got probably 9 or 10 messages this morning from people who are attending the tournament who begged me to not have this thing be playable at our tournament. Now, if you want to bring it to the tournament, if you are watching it, you are going to be there. You want to bring it for fun before and after, that's totally fine. But like I said, it will not be playable. The one thing that I do want to talk about also, I guess I'm kind of going on another tangent here, is if you are uh, hosting events, if you're a store owner or whatever the case is, because there is no organized play, there's no basic rules, and until anyone addresses this, you do have the ability to ban this at your local game store. Now, I would always say to follow the crowd in this situation. Just because you're not a fan of combo decks or whatever the situation is, if you have 10 people that play at your store and eight of them are okay with it, then I would allow it to be there because you never know if one of those two of those players want to play it. And then if you know you say no to it, but everyone's okay with it, you're kind of hurting your own audience. So it's definitely up to you guys on what you want to do. Those are just my opinions on it. Like I said, uh, not playable at our tournament. It is going down this Saturday. It's going to be crazy. There is so much stuff going on for it. So let's get into this deck list and let's talk about some of the cards. Alrighty, guys. So here is the deck. And the first thing we're going to do is start with the character cards. Now, they are all specialists, which is the big point of it. And the other part is for the star count to be able to allow some star cards in the deck, which we'll get to here in just a second. Now, the only character that actually matters in this is Chromia. And that's because her one ability to flip allows you to get a white battle icon card from your scrap pile to your hand and then also when you attack if you flip two whites you get to draw two cards which I would imagine could be relevant. Now the one thing I'll talk about is the sequencing with this. Now the one thing I want to talk about with this deck is the sequencing in the way that it goes off quote unquote. Now what will happen is obviously your opponent will attack you if you are running this deck. You get to attack back which will be like normal. I would imagine you'd probably throw out Prowl or if you want to try to go out with Chromia first to try to draw two to get the little bit of extra card draw early on you totally can and then what will happen is that you're going to be playing cards such as peace through tyranny now what peace through tyranny does is it allows you to ko a character that has six stars or more my guess is you're most likely going to be going with swoop as your character for the first one 
it truly, truly won't make a difference, but you're gonna KO that character, which is gonna allow you to take an extra turn, which is where all of the crazy shenanigans begin to happen. Now, when it comes to your next turn that you get to take immediately, we're gonna be looking at all of the upgrades first. Now, the first thing with those upgrades is we're gonna be looking at is multi-mission gear. Now, what this allows you to do is to play an extra action on your turn. Well, now you have two actions in the turn. We have multi-mission gear, which allow you to play an extra upgrade in the turn. Obviously, that'll take up one of your upgrade slots, and then you can play another one, which could go back to the multi-mission gears, now giving you that second um, action. Or you can play cards such as Field Communicator, which allows you to play the top card of your deck for free, which is actually super important, being able to play free cards. If you notice, is that pretty much every card in this deck is drawing you cards. We have Confidence, allows you to draw two, uh, scrap two, and then that allows you to play another action, so it doesn't take up an action for your turn, which is super powerful. Powerful. Uh, we have pep talk allows you to draw two. We have incoming transmissions allows you to draw two, put one on top. And then you have equipment enthusiast, which makes a huge difference. We'll get to here in just a second. You're going to be drawing a bunch of cards off of that. Testify allows us to, you know, you draw two and your opponent draw two. Seeing as how I'm guessing your opponent doesn't get to go again, giving them two is not going to make a huge difference. And then universal network access allows you to draw three. Super, super powerful stuff. Now, what you may notice in the top right of your guys' screen is swap parts and this is a huge huge card in the list what will happen is that you'll be able to play things like multi-mission gear let's say you just play one well when you play that one onto one of your specialists you get an extra action well you play swap parts which then puts that onto another character and it does get to proc again because it's going on to another specialist. Well, now you get to play another action. And yes, you didn't really get any further in that. You wasted one action to move it from a different character. But when it comes to playing multiple actions and then swapping them multiple times, you start to get to some pretty nutty things. You get to play three or four upgrades in the turn. So now you get to play two or three field communicators, or you get to play two or three multi-mission gears, giving you access to more actions. Now it does run three leap of faith, which I feel like is probably one of, if not one of the most important cards in the list. It allows you to play the top card of your deck and then it allows you to play the top card of your deck after that. So you may be getting free cards, being able to get free multi-mission gears or get free peace through tyrannies. And then what will happen after all of this is you'll go to start your next turn and then you can use cards such as I Still Function to bring a character back and then you play Peace Through Tyranny to then KO that character and take another turn. So that is going to be your big, big combo. Now, looking at all these things, I'm probably sure you guys are like, well, how are you playing that many actions on a turn? I mean, you gotta play the burst, uh, the plasma burst to do two damage to a character. You have to be able to play the Peace Through Tyranny to be able to take an extra turn, and you have to play the Ice Still Function to bring a character back from the KO pile. That's three actions by itself in a turn. But the way that this deck works is that you get multiple actions off of all of your cards. Again, Field Communicator is getting you free stuff. Leap of Faith is getting you free things. Brainstorm is allowing you to play multiple in a turn. Swap Parts is allowing you to play multiple stuff in a turn. But the deck revolves around the entire deck. Literally, the way that it works is that you draw your entire deck every single turn. Now, the developers originally created this game and really actually thought a lot about how to avoid stuff like this. And the way that they originally did it was that when you play a card, it does not get scrapped right away. So they were hoping that you wouldn't be able to cycle through your deck. But when you do take an extra turn at the end of turn, all the cards that you played get scrapped. And then you shuffle them back into your deck when your deck runs out. So this deck literally draws every single card in its deck every single turn. Now that's at least the goal. Is it necessary? Probably not. You really only have to play the three cards in a turn. You have to play the ISO function, bring a character back. You have to play Peace Through Tyranny to KO that character. And then you have to play Plasma Burst to do two damage to a character and just keep doing that over and over and over. And so when it comes to the fizzling, you have to hope that your opponent doesn't get the combo, right? You have to hope that they just don't get that ISO function or they don't get that Peace Through Tyranny. But if you look at it, your opponent has three characters, or you have three characters if you're playing this deck. So you can play a Peace Through Tyranny, get rid of one of your characters, keep going. And then you can play a Peace Through Tyranny, 
get rid of one of your second characters and keep going. You just have to have one character out there. Now, what will happen after three turns of you attacking, because you are required to attack every single turn, is that all of your characters will become tapped. Now, normally what will happen is that you'll attack with all your characters, all your characters will be tapped, your opponent will then get to attack with all their characters, and then they'd be tapped, and you guys would quote unquote reset. But because your opponent never gets to go, your characters just stay tapped but you can still take an extra turn. That's always been a big conversation with Peace or Tyranny is that you still can take that extra turn. You can still play cards like normal, but you can't untap. But this deck won't care about it because of the one singleton of that Plasma Burst. And it's okay even if you take a turn and don't play a Plasma Burst. As long as you can take another turn after that and get a Plasma Burst then, it's not a requirement to play Plasma Burst every single turn, but it is a requirement to play an I Still Function and a Peace or Tyranny in the same turn and being able to cycle through your deck obviously just puts all these cards into your hand to be able to play a bunch of actions and quote unquote go infinite now cards such as incoming transmission are super important in this list because you get to stack the top of your deck which is where things get kind of interesting you know you can go ahead and play incoming transmission as one of your things you can put that piece of tyranny on top or that isol function on top if you have whatever the opposite card in your hand is and then play the leap of faith and now get that next action for free something on top of that and just really combo so there is the deck i did want to show it to you guys it is it's actually built extremely well i'm not gonna lie i really love the way that it's built but for all the previous reasons i talked to you guys i'm still just not a fan of this deck and this meta but now let's talk about a way to disrupt it and honestly guys there's just not a lot the way to first look at it is with sentinels this is pretty probably going to be one of your better decks to play against it and it's just because of mirage now mirage as long as you get to go first even if you're going second you're in a good spot because i don't think your opponent can combo off on turn one but being able to go um and flip mirage to look at your opponent's hand and scrap an action from it is pretty relevant now granted your opponent does play a lot of draws so even scrapping one may not stop your opponent it honestly may not they may be able to draw into it and get lucky and be able to go off just like before maybe even take okay you took an action from me let your opponent go for another turn while you build something up or play something simple like a pep talk just to draw two and then go off the turn after that so it's definitely a fantastic thing to try to stop it but again i don't know how well it's going to do but it is definitely one of your better options but if you're looking for a card to really put a dent in your opponent's hand that kind of does the same similar thing as uh, Mirage does, it's Espionage. Espionage allows you to choose a battle icon color, your opponent reveals their hand, and you get to scrap a card from it. So maybe you can help, you know, scrap that piece of tyranny from your opponent's hand, or maybe that, you know, whatever else, the leap of faith that you're going for to stop. But the one thing that really sucks about that card is it can't target anything that doesn't have a battle icon. Plasma Burst is one of the ways that they're going to be dealing a bunch of damage to you, so you can't really strip them from that. Plus, when they're taking a bunch of turns, it doesn't really affect it anyway. And I still function, half of the combo of the deck is a blank pit that you can't touch. So that is definitely another card that you can use to kind of help throw a wrench into your opponent a little bit. And then finally, there are cards such as a Disruptive Entrance that'll do that. Um, it allows you to scrap an action from your opponent's hand. That's going to be a really good card. The problem that I talked about previously is just your response time. You have to really hope that you have these in your hand, turn one, turn two, to even kind of throw a wrench in this, but I don't know how much it's going to stop it. So there is the deck those are really some of the cards that you can use to play against it and that is just kind of the way that it is right now i definitely wanted to let you guys know about this deck teach you guys a little bit about this deck so you do understand when you are playing it some of the feelings that you are going to be putting into your player base and some of your opponents and then if you are going up against it for you to better understand the deck and to kind of understand all of the other things around it now, let me know what you guys think about this deck and infinite combos in this game down in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I was really just trying to get out ahead of this deck, really talk about it before you guys started seeing a bunch of really crazy things online and stuff. So there's the deck. I'll catch you guys in the next one.